Nobel. <laughs> Always something. John, are you ready? Welcome. It's a great day to be a Rotarian. Imagine what we can do together. Uh, I, I am building a list of past service members to lead the pledge. I do not have anyone slotted for today, but if you are or know one and would be willing to lead the pledge, let me know and I'll put you on the list. So let's say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Before we sit, I'd invite you to pause for a moment while I pray. We give thanks for this food and fellowship. May Rotary friends and Rotary ways help us serve others all of our days. Thank you. We have two large groups of guests today, so uh, I'm gonna run the mic over to Grace and uh, David and let them introduce their guests. I'm very pleased to present and introduce you to my four Ukrainian guests. Uh, two of them have been here for five weeks, this is Tatiana and Alina, and they lived with me until about two days ago. They're now in the apartment and getting settled. It's quite a process to do that. And our other two friends are Mila and Panina who I think got here about a week ago, but we didn't quite get that conversation finished. And they are also in an apartment right next door to Tatiana and Elena. So we're very pleased to have them here. And we thank you and Rotary for all of your support and help to them. I had Rotary Youth Exchange yesterday. And I expected to have seven guests, but uh, unfortunately, three of them are at the Express Care Center right now. Uh, hopefully, they'll be able to join us soon. Uh, we had two uh, former exchange students visiting us Eva from Austria, stand up. <laughs> and Josie, Josie's the one that, from uh, Denmark, who's at the uh, early uh, Express Care Center. Uh, and then her family, which includes Sebastian, who was also a Rotary Youth Exchange student to Mexico, and Jody's dad, Hunters. So uh, cup money for July is Pine Ridge Prep Preschool for their reading program. So dig deep. Uh, with Zach Arns ascending to the vice presidency of our club, his board seat is now open. So uh, his, his term was from 21 to 24. That term is now open. And the board has asked me to announce this for any interested members to contact us or me. Uh, the board meets month, monthly by Zoom and shares the leadership roles of running the club. So if you're interested, let me know. We are predicting meals from past week's uh, numbers. So if you are planning to bring an, an extra number of get, uh, guests like we have today, it's very helpful if you let us know that you're bringing them so that we have enough food for everyone. And so now for the second week in a row, fun bucks, $5 for a personal announcement, uh, $20 for a commercial announcement. 
So it went really well last week. If you were here, you you saw that. If you weren't, uh, we raised eighty five dollars last week for uh, support of the club budget. <laughs> Mr. Noel, do you have a stand in front of the camera and and hand me the money? <laughs> Just like a brother. <laughs> anyway, this is a personal announcement. I just want to say that this guy is my brother, and I'm proud of him for taking this job this year. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dick. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> uh, Dick is my brother. Okay, let's just do, let's do this right. Dick is my brother. And like our father before us was president of this club. So let's give him a round of applause. Anybody else? Well, not as good as opening day, but thank you. Um, new members, we have uh, Jeff Stebbins is a new member applicant. He is sponsored by Rayhan. Uh, the board has approved him and he's in his seven day comment period. So uh, it's exciting to have new members coming on board. Our next uh, service project is Rotary Rubbish Roundup at the Seward Boat Ramp. Lee, stand up. I don't know where you're sitting. Lee is... Uh, Going to lead that, continue to lead that effort. The board approved, and we have received our volunteer vests. So, if you're going to uh, be on one of the Rotary Rubbish Roundup teams, or if you're going to, uh, I just got an email from the zoo uh, that the they're they're going to start stringing zoo lights. Uh, on July 22nd. And so they are encouraging volunteer groups to form teams and come on Fridays from nine to noon. The zoo staff works all day. So if you wanna stay and work longer than three hours, great. But if you're interested in that, let me know and we'll form a Friday Zoo Lights team. Included in that email was that they're expanding again this year and expect between the end of July and November to add 40 new frames to the, the zoo lights. So projects coming up. Our speaker today is our district governor, Stephanie Meyer. She has nearly 20 years of experience in the public and nonprofit sectors in a variety of elected, appointed and volunteer roles. She most recently completed more than six years of service as a Shawnee City Council member, including three years as council president. Prior to that role, she served on the city's planning commission. Her professional background includes communications, governmental affairs, and business development work. Stephanie's community involvement includes serving as a past president of the Shawnee Rotary Club and current Rotary District 5710 District Governor past chair of the Johnson County Theater in the Park Advisory Council, volunteered big with Big Brothers and Sisters, and in 2018 became a living kid kidney donor. I guess that's better than the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was extemporaneous. That was not, that was not part of her uh, prepared remarks. Following that experience, Stephanie joined the National Kidney Foundation's Regional Advisory Board to help advocate for increased organ donation. And in March, 2022, successfully summited Mount Kilimanjaro with 21 fellow living kidney donors to increase awareness. In 2018, she was honored to receive the Jean Amos Service Above Self Award in recognition of her contributions. Your district governor, Stephanie Myers.
thank you all. I have not fully gotten used to the standing thing. I'm trying to make my husband do it when I come in, but no luck yet. <laughs> so I'm uh, very excited to be here with you today, uh, share a little bit about myself, a little bit about what's happening in our district and at the international level too, and would love uh, to be casual. Uh, it's kind of who I am uh, as a person usually, so feel free to jump in uh, or we can chat a little bit on the other side too. Uh, so just want to share, uh, first of all, for many, I see some familiar faces, uh, some some very important uh, Rotary bigwigs, so don't grade me too harshly, Larry. <laughs> but for those folks who don't know me, I'm very well, I want to share a little bit about myself. So on the far side there, uh, that is a picture of my immediate family. So that is my husband, Brian, he is a patent attorney in Kansas City. We met at K-State, so you'll see uh, Willie on there. That is my favorite, uh, yes, favorite K-State logo is the old school Willie. Uh, we met our last week at K-State during a game of Power Hour. So if you're unfamiliar with that, ask me later. It involves a lot of beer. I won. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we met at K-State. We were both heading on to KU uh, for grad school and law school. Uh, that is also why I have the Jayhawk. That is my favorite Jayhawk there. We call him Sexy Legs Jay. Uh, it's a good one. So got my master's in public administration from KU. Uh, so a little more about me beyond KU and K-State. I am a lifelong Cubs fan. Grew up watching baseball with my grandfather. I still hand score games, much to my husband's chagrin as well when I go to a baseball games. But uh, that picture was taken outside of Wrigley Field, uh, the first game that they won of the World Series run in 2016. So I'm pretty sure I broke the curse myself. So you're welcome. Uh, so that was taken there. And then you can see uh, that's a rotary photo. So I was, as Steve mentioned, uh, the president of the Shawnee Rotary Club in 2016. It was our 20 year anniversary. So that is a picture from that. I have been a Rotarian for just over a decade now, uh, always with the Shawnee Club. So always proud of them as well. And then um, lastly, you'll see this the picture is from Morocco. So I am a, a very big traveler, want to see all of the world, like to uh, go to the most uh, exotic places that I can. So definitely that. I should add also, I'm very into wine, which Steve just, you guys just became my favorite club visit so far because he gave me a bottle of wine. Uh, so uh, one of my COVID hobbies was becoming a level one sommelier as well. So it justified how much wine I was buying. It worked out well. For <laughs> so, and I, I do work uh, in addition to that. So I work for an architecture firm in Kansas City. I help our education clients pass bond elections. So if you voted on a bond issue sometime in Kansas in the last few years, hopefully I have been involved in that. So uh, that's kind of the high stuff there. As Steve mentioned in the bio, here are some things that I like to talk about uh, a lot and promote. One is living, although the other donation is important as well, <laughs> but uh, living kidney donation. I did uh, donate my left kidney in 2018 uh, to someone, um, Dan, on the screen here. I did not know him uh, when we started that process. Uh, we actually met our last day before I got final approval. So it was like the most awkward first date you can imagine. We knew we were a match, but hadn't met. Um, but he's doing well. His kidney percentage is actually 1% higher than mine. So I'm a little curmudgeon about that, but <laughs> he's doing very well. Uh, and you'll also see a picture from Kilimanjaro. So this is also related uh, to kidney work that I do that I am super passionate about. It was with an organization called Kidney Donor Athletes. Uh, and our goal is really to show folks that you can donate a kidney and live a perfectly normal life and take on any sort of physical challenge you want, including climbing the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. Uh, so we did that in March. Would love to talk about that. It was six days up and two days down and whew, lots of good stories there. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I see that picture and my knees hurt instinctively. So, uh, But it was great. And then um, lastly, you'll see the photo from my time on council. So most of my life pre-architecture was in politics. So I was actually driving into Topeka uh, every day for about 14 years, probably. Uh, so spent a lot of time at that big building over there uh, talking to people about politics. So that's kind of the sort of the, the more public things that people know about me. Um, I'd like to mention too, more importantly, what got me into community service and made me so passionate about giving back to uh, the place that I live and work and play. And a lot of it has to do with, uh, you'll see a picture of that girl with the awesome home cut bangs. Uh, that is me when I was five. So 
Uh, when I was four, I lost my father. He was 28, uh, died of a massive heart attack. I found him. Uh, I had a two-year-old brother at the time. Um, my mom and dad, neither of them had gone to uh, college, barely finished high school. So when my dad died, my mom started sacking groceries at Dylan's. I uh, did that for a long time. We actually lived in a trailer. We were on state assistance. Uh, it was not a great time, as you might imagine. And uh, that picture is from the Christmas right after he died. And it's important to me uh, because all of those gifts you see were provided by a community volunteer organization uh, who came in to make sure that we had a Christmas and we would not have. Uh, so it was very impactful to me and my family and carried on. And then the other picture you see, I had a crazy childhood if you <laughs> picked up on that. But when I was nine, uh, that picture there is a picture of the uh, April uh, 1991 tornado that hit Andover, Kansas. It also hit my house is in that path uh, there. So uh, that was certainly impactful. Uh, I remember and will always remember that before we really got to our house, we were down the street, thank goodness, at an elementary school fun night. Um, before we got to our house, there were already volunteers in our neighborhood uh, who were there to help us. I remember very distinctly the face of the uh, Salvation Army volunteer, still kind of chokes me up, uh, the Salvation Army volunteer who gave me a teddy bear and a glass of juice standing in front of what was left of my house. Uh, so it changes you certainly uh, as a person and made me really uh, committed to spending the rest of my life kind of paying forward what I have been so blessed uh, to have given to get through all of that stuff. So that's why I'm here. Uh, all of that sort of helped form my worldview. So this is one of my favorite quotes. It's by the author of Charlotte's Web. Uh, it is what I try to live by. I, I am determined to change the world and also have one hell of a good time. Uh, so I hope you are as well. Uh, that is sort of what we're going to go into the rotary year thinking about. Uh, so with that in mind, want to update you a little bit on the state of the district, just how things uh, generally are going quite well, I would say. Um, Vern Hendricks, my, my outgoing district governor, did a fantastic job uh, last year, so as you'll see from here. So we have 43 clubs here in District 5710, uh, just under 2,100 members right now. Uh, you're doing fantastic work uh, on every front. So district grants you'll see last year district-wide. We had just under $80,000, and I'll talk a little bit about what those were uh, as well, and global grants over 100000 uh, So some pretty cool opportunities, including one right here in your community uh, that I'll talk about as well. Foundation giving was very strong. You guys had an amazing year uh, last year, so congratulations on that. Uh, District-wide, about $355,000 given to the foundation which averages out to about $170 per member in our district, which is very high and fantastic. So kudos to you all uh, for your continued commitment, especially during what was a tough, of course, couple of years. So kudos to you for that. Um, and lastly, Polio Plus. Also, Jim Arnett is our district Polio Plus chair. If you haven't heard him talk about polio, listen to him talk about polio. Uh, he's fantastic and exceeded our goal there as well. Uh, so more to come on that front. So district grants, again, this is why we're in Rotary, right, to do good in our community. So this is just an example of some of the projects that were funded through district grants and clubs across the district. So it, it went to providing things like bulk beds for kids who didn't have them, disaster relief kits for people who end up kind of where I was, uh, other fresh start kits for folks who are involved in human trafficking, uh, coats, shoes, dictionaries, on and on. Um, you guys are doing tremendous work throughout all of Northeast Kansas and beyond to make your community a better place. So just wanna show you some examples of that at the global level, also doing a great amount of good. So we have global grants that we are partnering on in South Africa, uh, working on water, sanitation, helping folks understand how to grow food hydroponically, super interesting uh, there. We also have quite a few projects locally, uh, US-wide. We are working uh, with a group providing clean water to the Navajo Nation right here in the United States, uh, which is a tremendous project. And importantly, and excited, I think for a long time, I always thought global grants were money that like went away and never came into the district, right? But we have one right here. Uh, so Patty Millard, who probably everyone in the room knows, uh, was very involved in getting a global grant here in Sepika, the Intersection to Care grant. Uh, so. It's about $100,000, and what it does is it works with the Shawnee County Department of Corrections. So when female inmates are released out of incarceration, oftentimes they're very susceptible to human trafficking. They don't have any resources. They don't have a place to go. They don't have a place to stay, clothes. They don't have anything. And so sometimes there are even traffickers who will wait in that parking lot downtown uh, to bring them into the fold or bring them back 
uh, to that. So the work that the Human Trafficking Club and Patty and all of those folks are doing is going to help provide resources to those individuals and help them get a place to stay, clothing, get them set up on their way to a job, uh, do all the things to keep them out of that loop. So really phenomenal. We have a lot of partners across the world uh, on that grant. Actually, they just won another $25,000 state farm grant from one of your local state farm agents here in Topeka as well. So good work uh, that is happening locally and internationally. Polio as well, as I mentioned, last year we exceeded the goal. The goal is again $100,000 as we get into hopefully kind of the end phase of eradicating polio across the globe. We want to make sure we finish strong. Uh, to that end, last year, end of last year, it's probably been a few months now, uh, we established a Polio Plus Society at the district. So those folks are individuals who have pledged to give at least $100 a year towards the eradication of polio. So I encourage you all to join. Uh, we are, I think, two months in and we have 43 members now. So off to a good start. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna do two district-wide events for polio, uh, which we have done previously, bringing one back, um, pints for polio. So uh, it could be a pint of wine, I suppose, but <laughs> encouraging clubs uh, to work with their local breweries, uh, you know, restaurants, what have you, and have a Pints for Polio Day on World Polio Day. So we'll help you with the resources for that. I'm going to hear more about that at the district level as we get closer. It's October uh, is when that typically happens for World Polio Day. And then we will also be doing in communities where we're able, so hopefully Topeka will be one, a Purple Pinky Donut Day, which is the hardest, like it's like a word, <laughs> Purple Pinky Donut Day. Uh, which is a similar concept to Pints for Polios, but instead of beer, it's a donut. So donut shops uh, can make a little donut with like the purple pinky, however they want to do it, kind of a purple donut, and the proceeds, again, benefit the eradication of polio. So a couple, a couple of activities on that front we'll be working on as well. And then I just want to talk to you about some trends. So overall, uh, in terms of membership, here's what Rotary International uh, looks like. So just about 1.2 million now. We saw 1% decline. I think that's stemming off from what we've heard there are lives. There's a lot of club growth, um, specifically outside of the United States as well, but coming out of COVID, uh, starting to level off what everyone saw uh, over the last two years. Uh, at the zone level, about the same, about a five and a half percent decline in membership. So zone uh, is basically, our zone is kind of the center of the United States into Central America. So saw a little bit of a decrease there uh, and that is mirrored in our district as well. So we had a 5% decline in membership last year in large measure. Uh, we lost two rural clubs uh, in our district. So Bolton and Oskaloosa uh, are no longer with us, unfortunately. Uh, so that is probably what that is. Our goal is to flatten that line out uh, for the next year. District demographics, this is a little hard to see from where you are, but about 32% of our district is women. Uh, so we could bump that number up a little bit, but a good start. And then age demographics, I point this out because you know, one of the things RI is talking about is getting more folks who are a little bit on the younger side of the spectrum. So we've been looking at that. Uh, unfortunately, about half of our district has not reported their age uh, to our eye. So please do that. I promise it's a secret. No one will tell how old you are, uh, but we would love to know so we can get more accurate uh, measurements of that. So please, please, please just put in your date. I promise it'll be okay. Uh, so what is that? we've talked about kind of where we are. I want to talk about where we're going over the next year. So as I mentioned, uh, really focused on having fun and doing good uh, in the district. So we're going to do that by focusing really on three issues, I think, or three uh, areas rather. The first I think is the most important uh, member re-engagement, engagement. engagement. Uh, it speaks to a lot of what uh, Jennifer Jones is talking about as well. So we wanna make sure all of your members are excited and happy and motivated to come every week, are excited about service, are thrilled to tell people they are Rotarian. So looking at opportunities that we can help you all to make sure that you kind of have the pulse of your club uh, and know, what they want and what they want to see in the next year. So we'll be working on that. A big part of that is service, of course. It's the reason everybody joins Rotary for a large degree, I hope. Uh, so we, we really are encouraging folks to get back to doing as many service projects as you've done before, perhaps even more, uh, looking at opportunities. Are there other organizations here in Topeka that you could partner with and do a service project? Where can we increase the impact of all of that good and who can we work with? So we'll be helping y'all with that. Uh, and then lastly, how are we having fun? Fellowship is such an important part of it. You know, I think some of us, what I've been hearing certainly as I've been going around the district is 
in some cases, people are kind of out of the routine of attending a weekly meeting. It's been a couple of years. We're coming out of that. Uh, what can we do to continue to make it a fun, enjoyable place to be? So to do that, uh, we have just created a district membership committee. Previously, it had been a single person. Uh, so he, that's a lot of work for one guy, uh, so or gal. Um, but we have created a committee. So Chuck Udell from the Leewood Club is going to be leading that up. And we're going to have, it's, I think, eight people in total are going to be working on different aspects. So growing the clubs, uh, establishing new clubs, keeping club members engaged. Really, it's going to be a full team who are resources to y'all. Uh, to make sure that you have everything that you need and we can help you uh, in any way possible. So you'll see that. Uh, we also, more maybe at the president and membership level for the club, we'll continue to have online roundtables where people can just log on and say, hey, I need some ideas for how to get members to do this or what are you guys doing? Just brainstorming uh, with all of your peers. So that will continue. On the service front, I'm excited. Uh, we are going to do a quarterly district service days. So the district will be coordinating a service activity that we would love as many of y'all to join as possible. Bring your friends. They don't have to be Rotarians. Uh, we would love to encourage them to come. And if you aren't able as a club to do that, we would encourage you to do a service project here in Topeka on your own that day. The goal is to get all of our district Rotarians out and doing service uh, throughout that specific day. So we'll have one every quarter. We're going to start with district conference, uh, which is going to be the end of September. So that'll be our first one. Uh, and I'll tell you about it. So uh, district conference, encourage everyone to go. Please, please, please. It's going to be fun. Uh, I promise it is September 22nd through the 24th. Uh, we are mixing it up a little bit this year. So uh, we will. Friday will still be a fairly traditional day of having breakout sessions and really fantastic keynotes and having the annual dinner uh, that we typically do. But Thursday evening is going to be all about fun. So I am the Shawnee Club. So we are doing a pub crawl of downtown Shawnee. Because if you haven't seen it, you should see it. Jason Lives Breweries there. There's lots to drink. I'm just telling you, uh, it'll be fun. A good opportunity to get together. And then on Saturday, in lieu of the traditional programming, we're going to be doing that day of service. So we'll have a breakfast to kick things off. And then you'll have several, several different opportunities, kind of a choose your own service adventure uh, to figure out how you want to do a project that day. So uh, that is coming up. Registration is going to be available here in the next week or two. So I look for that. I'm sure Steve will send it out too, but you'll be coming hearing from the district on that. So we encourage you to please, please attend. It'll be fun. Lastly, a little bit of an RI update, uh, just so you know from a broad perspective, the, the great work uh, that you all and all of our peers across the world are doing. Uh, so again, we have about 1.2 million members. Those members did 47 million uh, service hours over the last year. So even in COVID, uh, incredible, incredible impact there. And $333 million uh, was allocated in global service initiatives. So uh, really incredible. Hopefully y'all feel proud about it. I certainly do to be a part of an organization that is doing so much good in that area. Want to call out, and especially with our guests who are here today, uh, that a, an important part of that has been uh, RI to date has donated more than $15 million towards humanitarian uh, aid in Ukraine. So uh, really phenomenal work, wonderful work you all are doing here. So. Uh, Really excited about that piece of it too. Uh, lastly, hopefully you all have heard, we have our first female international president, Jennifer Jones, uh, who is fantastic. We were uh, fortunate enough to have her come into our president-elect's training, Heartland Pets, a few months ago and got to spend the day with her. Uh, we have the same taste in wine, so that's <laughs> good. Uh, and she's also tremendous. She will, she will be a wonderful resource. She runs a marketing company in Ontario in her day job. Uh, so she has some really great I think hopefully fun ideas to get people motivated and engaged in Rotary again. So I just want to share her goals. Uh, lastly, what she's going to be focusing on. So a continued focus, of course, on DEI. We want to make sure that our clubs are reflective of our communities. Uh, so she's going to continue to work on that effort as well. Uh, the welcoming club experience, as I mentioned, we want to make sure members are happy and engaged and excited about Rotary. So that will certainly be one of her focuses, one of ours at the district level as well. Empowering Girls will continue. Hopefully you all heard about that last year. It was President Mena's uh, initiative that she is going to continue as well. And hopefully we'll be able to help with that some at the district level too. It's something certainly I'm very passionate about, empowering women and girls. So I think you'll hear a little bit more about that uh, locally as well. 
And then lastly, of course, she, she does marketing and communication. So we're, she's going to be doing a worldwide media tour to really highlight, I think it's eight different big projects that Rotary is doing around the globe uh, to invite folks in, to invite press in, to really show people what Rotary is, what we're about, the impact that we're having and the good uh, that you all are doing. So hopefully that will uh, generate some excitement as well. I think that's it. So what questions? Comments, jokes. <laughs> yeah. Great question. Uh, I know there have been a couple, Jim will curse me for not knowing the exact number. Do you remember the exact number, Larry? I know there have been, in, I think, two more cases in Pakistan. I think there have been six this year so far. I think, yeah, yeah. So a little bit of a slide back, which I think was expected, uh, but still trending in the right direction. Anything else? Pakistan is cooperating. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your Kilimanjaro trip. Sure, yeah. What would you like to know? Uh, it was tough. Uh, um, so it was, it's six days up, two days down. Uh, the summit of Kilimanjaro is 19,341 feet. I'm saying that because I filled that one as much as the first one. Uh, it was incredible. It's, it's, a, it's a cool mountain. So tallest freestanding mountain in the world. So it's not a part of a range. It's in Tanzania. Uh, so it's really, it's cool to come up on. You go through the climb you go through five different ecological climates so we were starting in the rainforest i had like a monkey jump on my pack literally at one point a small one thank goodness uh and then we're ending you're walking amongst glaciers uh, so it was so cool and uh the summit happens so i could talk about this forever <laughs> but uh you summit overnight so you get to base camp at the end you know four or five o'clock in the afternoon rest for a few hours and then you start the summit at about 11 o'clock at night uh, and it is three miles, but 4,500 vertical feet up to the summit from base camp. So it's, and they don't do switchbacks. Let me tell you, dancing here, it's like, we're just going straight up. Uh, so summiting at night was really cool. You're so high up. I have pictures I would love to show you. I should include one. Uh, you're so high up. You can see the curvature of the earth when the sun rises, which is just beyond incredible. About half the time we were above the cloud line too. So the sun would rise kind of below us. It was incredible. Go do it. It's great. <laughs> Lots of training. Yeah. Yeah. I did kind of, I've done a couple marathons before, so I did sort of marathon training and then I would go out to Shawnee Mission Park with a 40 pound pack and walk for six hours and then come home and do two hours on full incline on the treadmill with the pack every Saturday and Sunday. It wasn't a fun spring of training. No. <laughs> And I was the weirdo walking through the neighborhood with the pack on, you know, as everybody's walking their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> so, Seth, can you talk about why you're a volunteer? Why are you a Rotarian? I love that question. I haven't gotten that. Uh, you know, Rotary to me was kind of the perfect marriage of doing service, connecting in the community, um, meeting other friends and neighbors in my community. I So I said I was driving to speak every day for 15 years. We live in Shawnee, we've lived in Shawnee, and I had no real connection to Shawnee. So I wanted to do service where I was. I wanted to meet, I think I lost the. Just set yep. it down <laughs> <laughs> All right, good timing. Uh, so it was a good marriage of wanting to meet people, wanting to do service in my own community. And my council member actually recommended Rotary uh, and it's been a perfect marriage. And now I get to do some um, passion projects locally and also help at the international level. So I can't beat that. I think if he cuts off my mic, that means I must be done. So. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It's just characteristic of this club, but uh, we can't have a meeting without some technology issue. Uh, so uh, Stephanie has already signed a book. Uh, La Madre Goose, nursery rhymes for Ross Elementary, uh, and I would I would like to remind you that if you didn't sign in, I'm, we got our new badges, we got our sign up sheet like we used to do back in the good old days. Make sure you've signed in so we get your attendance. 
Next week's program is Dr. Jerry Farley with a Washburn update. And so I'll remind you again, if you're bringing extra guests, please let Vince know in advance. Rotary is a great place to share different experiences and diverse opinions. Let's live the four-way test every day and stand now to say the four-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you all. Have a great week. Thank you.